here with your solutions to Chapter 5 problems. 5.1, First City Bank pays 8% simple interest. Second City Bank pays 8% compound interest. Your initial deposit is $9,000. How much will you have in First City Bank at the end of seven years? And how much will you have in Second City Bank at the end of seven years? So future value, uh, the one equation we're going to use in Chapter 5 is uh, future value equals present value times 1 plus R to the T. That's for the compound case. And for the simple interest pay case, I'm going to take the principal or the present value times R times T plus the principal. I'm going to add it back again. So at uh, First City Bank, I'm going to put in uh, $9,000 of principal times R, which is 0.08, times T, which is 7, then I'm going to add that back, add that principal amount back. So um, 9,000 times 0.08 is $720, seven years, that gives me interest of 5040. I'm going to add that back to the principal amount, and I'm going to get a total in um, First City Bank of 14040. Um, now, in Second City Bank, where we have compounding, which is interest on interest, I'm going to take uh, uh, PV times 1 plus R to the T, as the equation says up above, so 9,000 times 1.08 to the 7th power. In Second City Bank, I'm going to have 15,424.42. And the uh, delta improvement by investing my money at Second City Bank will be $1,384.42. And there's your answer to problem 5.1. In 5.2, we're given a series of present values, years, interest rates, and they want to know what are these future values. The formula is future value, the one equation in this chapter. Future value equals present value times 1 plus r to the t or if I'm typing it into Excel, equal FV, paren, rate, comma, n per, number of periods, comma, payment, comma, minus PV, we must put present value in as a negative value in Excel if you're going to enter it that way. I like to do the basic math, make sure I can do it that way, and then eventually I'll get into using functions in Excel when I become a little bit more advanced. So if I take 1975 times 1.13 to the 11th power, I get, <coughs> total of 75, 75.83. If I take 6734 times 1.09 to the seventh power, I get 12,310 and two cents. If I take 81346 times 1.12 to the 14th power, I get 397,547. And if I take, similarly, if I take 192.050 times 1.06 to the 8th power, I get 306,098.52 cents. There are your answers to problem 5.2. In problem 5.3, we're solving for present values this time, <clears throat> given um, future value number of years and a rate of return. So. Uh, my equation is now by twisting around the future value formula. Present value equals future value over 1 plus r to the t. So in um, case A, I'm going to take 15,451 of future value divided by 1.09 to the 13th power. I should get 5039 and 79 cents. Uh, second case, I take 51,557 and divide it by 1 plus 0.07 to the 4th power, and I should get 39, 3, 3, 2, and 59 cents. Um, in the third case, I take 886.073, divided by 1.24 to the 29th power, I should get 17.30 and 78 cents. And in the fourth case, I take 550,164, and I'm going to divide that by 1.35 to the 40th power, and I get 
and 37 cents. And there are your answers to problem 5.3. In problem 5.4, we're given a present value, a number of years, and some future values, and we're asked to find the rate of interest um, in these cases. So we're asking, at what rate must I grow my money, $181, for four years to turn, end up with $297 four years later? The um, equation is percent R, same thing as compound annual growth rate, percent CHR. It's future value divided by present value to the 1 over t power minus 1. Or if you want to put it uh, in simple math terms, in terms of the radical, the t root of Fe over Pv, and then minus 1 outside the radical. In Excel, uh, you can type into this cell and uh, the corresponding cells for m per payment minus Pv and Fe equal rate, uh, left paren, number of periods, comma, payment, comma, minus Pv, comma, Fe. And that would go in this cell right here in Excel. Uh, we're going to do the basic math. So we're going to take uh, future value, 297 divided by 184 to the 1 fourth power. And we get a, an interest rate of 13.18%. On the next one, we're going to take uh, $1,080 divided by $335 to the 1 18th power. And we're going to get a present value of 3, oh, I'm sorry, we're going to get a, a rate of 6.72% in solving for R. On the third one, we're going to take 185, 382 divided by 48,000 to the 19th, 119th power to get 7.37% uh, for R. And on the last one, we're going to take 531, 618 divided by 40353 to the 125th power. We're going to get 10.86%. And there are your answers to problem number four. In problem number five, we're given some present values, a series of interest rates, and some future values. And we want to find the number of years involved in each of these cases. So we're solving for t. Uh, time is equal to natural log of future value over present value, that quantity, divided by natural log quantity 1 plus r. If you're typing it into Excel, the formula is equals number of periods, n per, left paren, rate, comma, payment, comma, negative present value, and then a comma, future value, right paren. Um, we're going to do the math part of it, um, learn how to do the mathematics first, then we'll learn to type it into our calculators, and then learn to type it into Excel. So um, what am I going to do here to calculate the number of years that, that it takes to grow $560 into $1,389.06, I'm going to take the natural log of 1389 divided by the divided by 560, that quantity, uh, divided by the natural log of 1.06. If I do that correctly, I get 15.59 years. Um, the second one, I'm going to take um, the natural log of 1821 divided by 810, and then divide that by uh, natural log of 1.09, if I do that correctly, I'll get 9.40 years. In the third one, I'm going to take 289.715 divided by 18,400, take the natural log of that, and divide that by the natural log of 1.11. If I do that correctly, I'll get 26.41 years. And then the fourth one, I'll take 430.258. Divide that by 21,500, take the natural log of that quantity, and then divide that by the natural log of 1.13, and I get 24.52 years. And there are your answers for T to problem number five. In problem number six, let's play who wants to send our child to college. College will cost you $320,000 for your child, you estimate, in 18 years when your uh, newborn is ready to go to college. You have $67,000 already saved up. What is the rate of return, rate of interest you must invest that in over the next 18 years not touching it? Nutrish pause, I like to say, never touching that money and let it build and let it compound. So we're looking for a rate of return, rate of interest, percent R equals future value over present value to the 1 over T power, or uh, minus 1, or the teeth root of future value over present value minus 1 is the way we're going to put it. Um, 
So what is the rate I must grow my money at to get to have three hundred twenty thousand dollars prepared for my daughter when she heads to college in eighteen years? Three hundred twenty thousand equals sixty-seven thousand times one plus r to the eighteenth using the future value present value formula, the one formula in this chapter, and then solving for r percent r equals future value of three hundred twenty thousand divided by present value of sixty-seven thousand to the one eighteenth power. Minus one, I get an interest rate of 9.08%. So if I take my money, 67,000, put it in a mutual fund or a set of investments, it gets me 9% uh, roughly per year, 9.08% per year. Uh, for 18 years, and the two should probably never touch it, I'll have $320,000 approximately when my uh, child is ready to go to college. And there's your answer to problem number six.